Alright guys, what's going on today? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sev256 and this is a brand new tutorial on how to mod Xenoverse 2, specifically on how to edit models in the program Blender. If you guys don't know what Blender is, it's a 3D model editing program that you can get on PC and Mac, I believe. It's absolutely free, but we do need this program to do what we're going to do today. Um, so let me go ahead and show you guys at this point what we're going to need to start out with. Um, so specifically, we're going to go ahead and join two models together so you guys can make a brand new model. We're not going to do any resizing or cutting off of models because I want to keep this very, very simple and, some, and basic for you guys to learn this out. I'm still kind of learning the process of this, so if I make a mistake, guys, I do apologize. But we're going to go ahead and get started right now, okay? So first things you guys really need at this point are the .esk, the .emd uh, for the main file or model you're going to be using, and then the .emd of the second model you're going to be using. Um, those are the first two you can really start out with. Um, so what you want to do is you want to select the .esk and the emd of the first model you're going to be using. And then you're gonna go over to your Xenoverse 2 directory, which you should have at this point, because you wouldn't be modding the game if you didn't. And you wanna have this folder called libsuniversemaster. Now, this is a folder or a file that you can get off the anime game mod forum that uh, we all know and love. Um, it's absolutely free, obviously, on that uh, website, and I'll probably put a link down in the description so you guys can have direct access to that link. But either way, we're going to go ahead and open up that folder, and then we're going to go ahead and open up bin, and we're going to go ahead and drag the two files that we selected earlier and drag them over to EMD FBX. Uh, when you drag them over to EMD FBX, that makes the file into an editable uh, model for Blender, okay? So we have the first one done at this point, and then we're going to go ahead and do the second one, same way again, okay? Now we have two uh, ready-to-go files for Blender at this point. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and, oh, you guys... I was working on it before, so sorry if you guys see that. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and start new. And when you start new, you're gonna see the square in the middle. We don't want that square there, it's unnecessary. So we're gonna go ahead and press X, and then we're gonna delete. Okay, you press X on the keyboard, and then you select delete. That makes this field all nice and clean for us. And we're gonna go ahead and go back into file, import, and FBX. Find your uh, folder or directory you're using for the files you want to edit, and then find the first model that you want to use. So we're going to use the HUM 707 right here, okay? And then whenever you import the file, it's going to look like this. It's going to be all laying down on the ground. There's really nothing you can do about that as far as I know, but my workaround to get it, you know, right side up is by pressing the number 7, which is going to make it, you know, standing up, but it's going to be backwards. And then if you tap the number 8 to make the field or camera change, I'm just going to flip it upside down, and then press the number 9, I'll make it right side up, all right? So that's how you get it to where you can actually see what you're doing. And then if you zoom in a little bit more, you're going to see the skeleton, and then you're going to see the model. Now, both are selected. We don't need the skeleton selected, though. So what you want to do is right-click the model. That will deselect the skeleton. And then there we go. We're in Blender. We have the model in there. It's great to go, okay? So at this point, what you want to do is come down here to where it says Object Mode, and then you want to select Edit Mode. The edit mode is going to change the model and to make it into this wireframe orange looking color right here at this point. And then we're going to come over to the right right here and it's going to have this little globe or ball thing. This is type of active data to display and edit material. This is what we want to go into so you're going to select it and then you're going to get a list of all the different parts of the model. Okay, So what we want to do in this point is we want to remove the parts of the models we don't want. Okay, So we're going to go ahead and we are going to deselect the part of the models we want to keep at this point. So I want to keep armor B A, armor B B, armor A mark. So I want to keep the deselected part of the model and get rid of the selected model because that's the part we're going to remove. Uh, so this is the clothing and then the skin, okay? So the way you do that is by pressing X and then selecting vertices that will completely remove the selected part, which is what we wanted. And then we're gonna go ahead and go back into object mode, all right? So now that we're in object mode, we have one singular model at this point right here, but we wanna join two. So what you wanna do at this point is go back into file, 
import FBX, and then grab the second model that you had and import it back in here. So most models, um, they uh, most models actually work pretty well together. They fit. You don't have to do a lot of editing to them. I um, you're pretty much good to go. In this case, we are good to go. Looks like the model has no clipping. Everything seems to be, you know, fitting pretty well. Sometimes you need to resize the model just to make it fit slightly better. Other times you can't do that at all just because uh, there's a lot of clipping, especially for uh, the female models uh, with their chest. It actually makes it really hard to kind of adjust the model sizes. I haven't figured out exactly how to get that um you know to fit just right for females um but males are pretty easy um so at this point now we have the second model and the second skeleton all right so first thing i just want to want to get out of the way is if you come over here you can see these two right here the x exp underscore hum underscore zero 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 dot zero zero one and then the same thing for the uh, zero 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 right here these are the skeletons at this point, and you can probably tell that based off the human looking bodies right here. We don't need the second skeleton, so what I like to do is just, uh, you come over to the actual skeleton model, right, and then if you right click it one time, it'll probably select the original the original skeleton, which is what we want to keep. Uh, we want to get rid of the one that's ending in dot zero zero one, so you right click it again, and it'll make the title white, and then I press X to delete it. Okay, the reason why you wanted to delete it is because if you're specifically, like for example, using X2M models, um, I found out that the model doesn't properly line up, you know, with the character or where it needs to be in game. This is just my little tip. I'm not sure if this works with, uh, you know, other models, in game models, but as far as I know, X2M model skeletons kind of mess up the placement of the model itself. Um, so, what we're going to go ahead and do is. Now, at this point, since we have one skeleton, we're going to go ahead and right-click the the undershirt right here for Goku Black, and then we're going to hold Shift and underscore the arm armor, right now underscore the armor, <laughs> right-click the armor. So this way we have both selected at this point, okay? One dark orange, one light orange. And then at this point, there's two ways you can do the next step because we're going to be joining the models. You either come over here and click join, which is what I like to prefer, you know, I prefer to do, or you can just do the shortcut, which, shortcut, ah, I can't talk, <laughs> sorry guys. Um, or you can do the shortcut control J and that will do it for you. But again, I like to actually click it to make sure I'm doing it. And as you guys can see it's highlighted or outlined as one entire model right now there's no two separate models at this point which is good and just in case this I know this doesn't work all the time but just in case what I like to do is I'll actually hold shift and then right click the skeleton and then I like to click join just in case the model isn't uh, you know connected to that skeleton sometimes I hit right up here where you see all these numbers it'll say uh, non selectable mesh you know and that's okay but I just like to do this to make sure all my ducks are in a row but pretty much at this point, we're all done with the Blender program. So we're going to go ahead and go File, Export, FBX. Okay. I always have a directory for the edited models. Mine's right here. So I'm going to export it in just one second, though, because I need to come down here to where it says FBX 7.4 binary and change that to FBX 6.1 ASCII. Okay. And then we're going to go ahead and come down here and change this from minus Z forward to just regular old Z forward. Now, I know for sure if you don't change this from 7.4 to 6.1, the model will become ridiculously huge. You're really not going to be able to see it because it's going to be too big. Um, so you want to definitely at least you make sure you have this to 6.1. And then I know that the Z forward that actually uh, handles the direction of the model. Um, so instead of minus Z forward, you want to make sure it's on Z forward because this way the model will be facing the right way when you actually do check it in game or in Xeno Viewer. Um, so we're gonna go ahead, go ahead and export it right now. You can name it anything you want, but I just, you know, it's for the sake of <laughs> doing the tutorial and saving time, I'm gonna keep mine as untitled. Uh, but now that I have this new untitled FBX, I'm gonna go ahead and drag it over to FBX EMD, which is gonna make it a file that Xenoverse 2 can actually read. So I have this brand new 707 bust EMD at this point, okay? So now if we go back to the original directory with the original files, um, what you want to do, just to kind of save you time, you want to go ahead and let's see. You want to, hmm, okay. So we're actually going to go ahead and take these files right here. All these ones right here that I'm selecting the uh, DO3, the DO2, DO1, the .emm, the EMB, not the EMD, but the EMB and the DYT. And you want to copy these files into the new directory with the new EMD file, okay? Because as you guys can see, these match up with the other 707 files, okay? Then what I also do is I get the, let's see, where are you at? 
the 10,000 EMM, which is the Goku Black undershirt EMM. I select that and then I come all the way down into my directory um, because I have a program called Xeno XML Converter. Okay, now what you do is you take the .emm, drag it over to the XML Converter, okay, and that will make a new XML file. And then what I also do since I'm in the original directory, I go ahead and go back up, right, find the EMB pack program that I have at this point. And what I do for this, if you guys don't know, I take the original Goku Black undershirt EMB and I drag it over that. Okay, and that makes a brand new file. And uh, the .emb controls the textures or has the texture files that go onto the actual model. Okay, um, so what I'm gonna do just so you guys can see this is I'm gonna take the .emm and the emb of the 10,000 model and I'm gonna go ahead and drag these into the edited model uh, folder. And then I'm also gonna go back into here, in the edited model folder at this point, and I'm going to get the .duit dragged it over to the EMB pack because this actually has the colors that are going to be on the model. I'm going to take the .emd of the new edited 707 model, drag that over to XML converter because yes, you need to do that. Okay. And I'm also going to get the 707 EMM and make that into an XML too. Okay. Now here, let me close these out so you guys can see these from fresh. Um, so let's do that. No. And no. Okay. And now we get all the XML files that we need. All right. Um, so what I want to do is I want to open up the 707 EMM XML and Notepad++. Preferably, you can do this in original Notepad, but I found out it's better work out with Notepad++ because it's all categorized and and works better with coding. Okay. Um, and then I also want to get the .emm XML of the 10,000 uh, model. So at this point, there's two things I really want to do. Okay, so the 10,000 EMM XML has skin underscore neck. And then if I go to the 707, it has skin underscore bust. All right, so the neck that's on the 10,000 model, which is the Goku Black undershirt again, is a titled neck. That's the part of the model that's, that's titled to. So what I generally do with the original EMM that I'm working with, uh, the 707 one, is I change it. Oops, I don't want to do that. I change it from bust to whatever it's going to be titled. In this case, it's going to be neck. Okay. And then, just so you guys can see this, uh, all these numbers right here, they mean a lot of different stuff. But the really, really important thing is uh, this one right here where it says Matte Scale 1X. Matte Scale 1X controls the value of the color that's going to be on the specific model. Okay. So you see, this one is uh, valued at zero. Now, the reason why it's valued at zero is because if you come over here to. Uh, oh, let me show this all for you guys again. I have this guy, I have this stuff all planned out for you guys, and I'm opening up stuff that you guys don't need to see just yet. <laughs> uh, but either way, um, that DYT that we unpacked with the uh, EMB pack program, uh, we're going to open that up, and then we're going to open up the DDS file, and preferably paint.net. If you have Photoshop in the DDS extension, it'll work, or plugin actually, it should work. But Paint.net is the easiest program to get. I think it's, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's absolutely free because I don't remember paying for it. Um, but either way, if you look at the DUIT, which is the colors again, um, you see we have the skin color of the Weiss armor um, model, and then we have the white part of the armor, the yellow part of the armor, and the grayish black part of the armor, which is usually the outline or the Weiss uh, logo. Now, uh, you would think that these are labeled one, two, three, and four. They're not. They're labeled zero, one, two, three. Okay, so that's why when we come back to the XML file, this is valued at zero because the skin color is always at zero. Okay, um, so now that we have the skin underscore neck, you know, taken care of, that's great. We're going to go ahead and go back into the 10,000 bust for the Goku Black undershirt. And then we're going to come down to where it says shirts because we're missing this part of the model uh, for the XML um, on the original EMM file. And we're going to go ahead and come down to the bottom of it. We're going to press enter and then you're going to copy and paste or paste it down. I mean, and now you, how you see this goes from index five straight to index one. We don't want that. You want to change index one to index index six. 
And now we have the correct coding for the colors of the Goku Black undershirt for the new Weast armor combination we're doing, okay? Um, so now that we have that, that's good. We're gonna go ahead and press save because we are absolutely done with this one. And actually, you know what? No, we're not done. We're not done because we're gonna change the color. We're gonna change the color of the shirt. So right now, if we go ahead and go back into the uh, DYT one more time, we see that number one is the white color of the shirt. I mean armor. I mean, we don't want number one, right? We want we want number three because that's the black part of the shirt, right? So we're gonna go ahead and change one to three on the shirt part of the EMM file, and now we're gonna press save. So now we're absolutely done with the EMM. We can close these two out, okay? And then we're gonna go ahead and we are going to see the .emd XML. We're gonna open that one up, and you're gonna see all of this information right here. All right, you're gonna see all this information. We don't need this information at this point. We need, we don't need all that. Um, so what we're gonna do to make this more manageable, manageable for us is we're gonna press and hold down Alt and Zero. That will compress all those lines down into again a manageable uh, form for us to read. And then you're gonna get this plus sign that next is next to the number two and number three and number four and number five and number six and number twelve. Okay, the EMD sub mesh is the part of the EMD file that has the control of the textures. Okay, um, so if we come over here to skin underscore neck, open that up, and then we come down to texture definitions, this will give you these lines right here at this point, and you'll see texture index zero and texture index zero. Now, these two control whichever texture is being used, just like the DYT and the uh, EMM file. Because um, remember how the EMM, we needed to change the color of the matte scale 1x to from 1 to 3. That's pretty much what we're doing for the uh, EMD file, except this has to do with the textures. So now that we know these ones are set as 0, what we want to do is come to the 10,000 bust that I opened up earlier, and we want to see what the 0 uh, bust is, or uh, texture is, okay? Um, so we have this one set for the clothing, which is, I mean, it's cool. You know, we don't need that one though. Uh, and then we have number one right here, which is the actual skin part of it. So what I do, what I do just in case I need it, is I copy whichever part of the skin or whichever texture I'm using, copy it into a directory so I have it just in case. Then I go into the EMB of the model I'm actually going to be using in the game and I unpack it, okay? Open up the new EMB folder and see what is the skin of the new, uh, the original model that we're gonna be using. Um, so technically, the skin for the Weiss armor is number two, but just to make sure everything's you know set right, I'm gonna delete that one for number two. Come back out, uh, change the name of the uh, EMB, EMB texture that we took out uh, a couple seconds ago, and drag it over into the new one. Okay, so now we have the EMB of the original Goku Black undershirt and the EMB of the Whis armor. Okay, cool, cool, all right? So now what we want to do is make sure we go back and change this to number two, and then number two, all right? Minimize it, minimize it, and now we want to go to shirts, okay? Now if we go to shirts and then texture definitions, it again say zero, zero, because whenever you make a new EMD, the texture index is always gonna be zero on each part of the model. Now, <laughs> if you guys are gonna have more than one texture, then you want to make sure that these are numbered the way they should be. So for the shirts, we wanna go ahead and go back into the bust of the uh, Goku Black undershirt, copy it, okay. And then see right here, we don't need the number one of the Whis armor because that's the clothing model of the Whis armor. You know, that black part that he was wearing or the armor has. We want to go ahead and change that um, to the undershirt texture. So I'm going to take the one I just copied, name it number one, copy it into the new folder that we're, or the folder that we're going to be using. So it went from the Whis armor clothing to the Goku black undershirt. This is great. This is good. Now, now technically, you can either do this in two two orders. Um, you can go ahead and pack the EMB file, which is what I'm gonna do, okay, just to get that out of the way. Then I'm gonna go ahead and change the texture index of the shirt to number one, number one. Now save it, because we're done, we don't need to do anything else, okay? Now I wanna take the two XML files that I have, and I want to go ahead and convert them back into the original form, so we should just update the original EMM file and the original uh, EMD file, okay? 
So that's all done. We're good for there. Now at this point, we are literally done with editing uh, the coding and the model at this point. So we can go ahead and copy all the files that we're going to need, which is the DOIT, the EMB, the EMD, and then the EMM. And again, if you have these D01, D02, and D03, you can take those, copy them, and then come, or well, let me make sure I have these copied because sometimes it doesn't happen. Yeah, so copy them and then go to your data folder, Kara, find the hum folder and then paste them in there, okay? So at this point, just so you guys can see it uh, outside of the game, the new model should look like this right here. Okay, see how we have the undershirt and the armor together? Bam, it's all done. It looks great in the Xeno viewer. But the real test is to see how it looks in the actual game. So at this point, I'm gonna take a second, load up the game and be back with you guys in a few seconds, all right? Okay guys, so we're in the game right now, and we're gonna go ahead and see how the model came out. If everything went perfectly, the texture should be just fine, the color should be just fine, and the position of the model should be just fine. So let's go ahead and see how the Whis armor looks now with the Goku Black undershirt. And bam, it actually looks pretty good. So see, we have the armor, you know, it's perfectly colored, the textures are perfectly great, the undershirt for Goku Black is right there, the textures are all fine, so everything is perfect at this point. So really, now that you guys know how to at least combine the models and import them and export them and edit the coding for it, which is honestly very, very easy, you're just changing a couple of numbers and a couple of words, um, everything for you should be at this point uh, fine when it comes to actually getting workable models in the game now when it comes to resizing and uh you know cutting off certain parts of the model that's more of you learning how to actually use blender itself and the um the processes and the shortcuts of that i can teach you a couple things on it but i'm really just learning that part on my own but when it comes to just getting files to work in Xenoverse 2, this is all you guys really need. So just take some time, watch this tutorial, practice on a few models, simple models, and then you'll get to a point where you can make your own stuff, okay guys? Um, if you guys enjoyed the uh, tutorial, the tutorial video I should say actually, <laughs> um, please leave a like down below, leave any comments that you guys need to leave on there to let me know if I can improve on anything for you guys. And you know, just let me know of any ideas that you guys uh, have when it comes to making certain models because you guys may make something you know really, really cool or something that I never thought of um, but that's all I have to say for you guys again I hope you you know learned something from the tutorial and I'll catch y'all later